Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Rockville and Gaithersburg, and just delighted today to be with Bart Yablonski, the owner of Dawson's Market in Rockville Town Square. Bart, thank you so much for taking time from your very busy schedule to Kibitz today. Oh no, glad to, thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. So let's start with your history. You've been in the food business for a very long time. Why don't you give folks a sense of uh, how you got started with your dad? Sure. Sure. So, um, so I've been in the food business for a long time. Thanks for pointing out that. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, I'm from originally from Baltimore, but um, went to school in New Orleans, and after that, ended up in Montgomery County. And so after college, I've been in Montgomery County. Um, I started out at Giant Food, um, worked there, and um, kind of learned systems, and then I went over to Freshfields. For those of you that remember Freshfields back in the day, Freshfields ultimately becomes Whole Foods Market. So I ran a Freshfields store in in uh, Bethesda. And then I had the opportunity to go to Atlanta um, and do Whole Foods in Atlanta. I did that for two years. And then I came back to Montgomery County and actually got out of the food business for a little while and went into natural spas business. So massage, facials, manicures, pedicures, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, <laughs> awesome relaxing business. You know, similar because a lot of the same products that we carried at Whole Foods and we carry here at Dawson's um, skincare lines, we carried at the spa. And um, I did that with my wife uh, for about 10 years. And then uh, we all went through the great economy issues in 2008 through 10. And uh, we had been in the business 10 years and figured it was opportunity to kind of shift gears. So I went back into food and uh, did a little stint with a frozen food manufacturer, a local manufacturer here in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, but then I ultimately ended up at Dawson's. And so I've been here at Dawson's since 2012. Yep. Um, store opened, I was the general manager here uh, for about three years. And I took over operations for this store and the sister store, which was in Richmond. Um, and then in 2018, the previous owner decided he wanted to focus on Richmond only and decided to close this location, which was my opportunity to take it over. And so, so I've been owner, owner since then. So October 2018, Dawson's closed and we were heartbroken. And I worked, I got to give a shout out to council member Sydney Katz and the yeah. council who stepped up and helped you uh, reopen the store in December of 2018. Talk about that, that period of time. Um, it was a crazy time. Uh, you were super supportive for us. We would not have been able to do it without your support and the connections we had through all the council members and the county executive um, and, and mayor and council and everybody really just came together to, to try to keep the store going. Um, the initial response when it was announced was kind of overwhelming. Um, as you probably remember, there was like 400 people, I think, showed up uh, to a meeting over at BizArts across the street um, to talk about the town council, uh, to talk about the town center um, and talk about Dawson's. And so from that, we realized we had to do something. Uh, and then you helped with you know the support of other uh, government people helped us to try to figure out a plan to make it work and to get it reopened. Thank goodness. So Dawson's from the very beginning was considered as court of, sort of a tenant, uh, an anchor tenant in Rockville Town Square that would draw people there. Um, how did you choose, I mean, I know you weren't the decision maker then, but why Rockville and how has this location worked out for you? So, um, so I mean, those that know the area, um, and I know it just kind of in, in anecdotally, but there was a grocery store here a long time ago before it was Rockville Town Square. Um, and so then, and I think it was Magruder's was here at the time, maybe, um, and, or Giant, um, there was a grocery store here. Up the, up the yeah, and so, um, so when Town Center was, you know, redeveloped and they created what they have here now, they wanted to have a, a, a grocery store. So there was an opportunity. Um, and Rick, who was the previous owner, um, you know, had a very successful store in Richmond, um, very community-based neighborhood type store. And so he was looking for a similar um, neighborhood environment, you know, where there was a lot of support from the community um, that he could basically cultivate and create a new store. And he found Rockville, I think it was probably a combination of him finding Rockville and Rockville finding him. Um, and so, you know, that's how the store ended up here. Yep. Um, and so for us, you know, we definitely have a lot of customers in the community um, that are right around here. Um, we're fortunate to have a lot of residential above us, like right up, up above my head. Um, and so as well as, you know, into the neighborhood. So um, we are definitely a community focused neighborhood store. Um, you know, that, that, that's what they wanted here um, when they developed this project. And so we're glad to be able to be a part of that. So one of the brands of Dawson's is not the typical giant and Safeway and all of those. 
is you're really clear about organic and locally sourced and stuff. Why don't you talk about that? What the what the parameters are and why you think it's important? Sure. So we have there's a lot of things that are unique about us, but we focus on three things um, that kind of set us apart from the competition. Um, so talking about in response to your question, um, what we carry is one of those things, uh, and that is our commitment to standards um, to carry clean what we call clean natural products. So we have a pretty extensive list of standards and banned ingredients, um, things that we don't want to have in the store. Um, it's printed around the store, it's on our website. And so we um, don't have any high fructose corn syrup or artificial colors or sweeteners. Um, all of our meats are free of antibiotics, growth hormones, um, nothing artificial. Um, and that travels around the entire store. So if you buy a piece of meat in the meat department to take home and cook, it's the same quality um, standard as if you, we have meat on our hot bar that you take home for lunch. Um, one exception to all that, when we reopened is that um, the customers were asking for some specific items that didn't meet the standard. And so we have a very, very small group of those. Um, they're basically in the grocery department um, and we signed them, we call them community requests because that's what they are, community requested certain things. Uh, and again, it's just a handful of SKUs and they're identified as, um, and they're basically like national brand type things that people really wanted and said, hey, you know, I buy this at the Giant, but if you have it at Dawson's, then I don't have to go to the Giant. And, and so we said, okay, we can do that. And it's less than 5%. It's probably less than 2% of the SKUs. Okay. That's number one. Number two? Number one. So number, so number two is our commitment to local. Um, so we are very focused on local products. Uh, for us, local is within 100 miles. Um, so a lot of places talk about local, you have to know what their definition of local is. Um, I've heard five hour flight as a definition at some time. So, um, so we are 100 mile. Uh, I won't tell you which store uses that. Um, and so we have that throughout the entire store. A lot of times people talk about local, they obviously think about produce, um, which we certainly carry a lot of local produce in season, but we have local around the store. So meat, seafood department, lots of stuff in the grocery department, uh, whether it's granolas or salsas or um, in the freezer section, we've got some waffles and ice cream and things like that. So all kinds of stuff, uh, lots of beer and wine uh, that is local. Uh, and we even have some local product in our body care section. So it's over 75 vendors. Um, it's a big distinction. We are definitely the leader um, in the community for local products. Um, and you know, it's something we're really proud about. And then number three, so that's number two. Yeah. Number three is our, is our commitment to, to the community. Yeah. So we're very, very focused on community. Um, we do lots of things to support the community. Um, we have events and obviously before COVID, <laughs> we have lots of events and things here at the store. Hopefully those will start off again soon. Um, we also have a commitment that 10% of our staff uh, or people that are in the difficult to hire category, people that have time, have difficulty finding jobs because of a physical disability, an emotional disability, um, learning disability, um, maybe work release program. So um, they're a vital part of our store and we're thrilled to have them here. Um, and so that's a commitment of ours that um, a good 10% of our staff, at least 10% of our staff is in that group. So that's our three things, the quality of the food, the standards, the local, uh, and then the community support. So let's stay on community support, which I was going to get to later, but let's get to that now. Um, I have joined you for everything from um, selling cards um, for community ministries of Rockville, now community Rockville rewards. to the Rockville Rewards, and you've hosted that, to giving away uh, packaged boxes of food to people who are um, uh, food insecure, to, I mean, you guys do so much, and then you host events for uh, Peace Day over in the uh, in the um, in the reception area. The cafe right over here. Just, yeah. yeah, the cafe, which is where you are now, just as a reasonably quiet place in the store. So, and those are just top of mind. I should have probably done a brain dump. But um, how do you decide what to say yes to? How do you decide what your priorities are? So we, um, you know, we try to um, stay kind of middle of the road. So we do we do allow some political things, you know, to come into the store, but we don't have an opinion either way. So we do host those types of things. Um, but we also do, you know, book fairs and we do, um, we've had farmer's markets in the past. We have a craft fair. Um, so we really look for things that, you know, will bring people to the store um, is one thing because we do want to get those customers to come in and experience Dawson's. Um, and then we also look for opportunities where um, there's a need in the community that maybe, you know, we can fulfill that somebody else can. So, I mean, we even offered 
Um, and you know, luckily they didn't need it. You know, they found all the sources. We offered to help with COVID vaccines or, or testing or whatever. So, um, you know, so we'll do whatever we can to support the community. Um, and we get a lot of requests for things. So we look at those requests. Um, we make decisions based on the organization. You know, it needs to have uh, a reputable organization. Uh, needs to be providing the benefit to the community um, and then it just needs to fit into our schedule with other events that we have so that's really the, the criteria for it um, and then we also do private events too in our space you know, where people can can rent space yep. Yep. Um, but most of the things that we've talked about here are all free so let's talk about covid um, for restaurants the pandemic has been a real challenge and too many have closed or really suffered but for markets, it's been kind of remarkable and an uptick as, as people are cooking more at home. Why don't you talk about what it's been like for Dawson's? Sure, so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, the silver lining in this terrible situation is, is for grocery stores. So, um, you know, grocery stores have definitely really done very well, um, not just selling toilet paper, but that was certainly a big, a big part of the sales. Um, but, you know, we, we here at Dawson's have seen um, a lot of customers come in um, that were new customers to us or that were infrequent shopping customers that became frequent shopping customers. And I think that's because we were able to pivot much faster than our competition, um, much faster than Whole Foods and Giant. You know, being a small independent store um, with the decision makers here in the building, we were able to pivot very quickly, whereas the larger stores can't do that. Um, and also because of the relationships that we've had with all of our vendors, um, we were able to source things much faster. Um, we bought things through the pandemic from people we never would buy those things from. So like um, one of my examples is that I bought a pallet of flour from my cheese vendor, you know, um, just strange thing, but they had it and they knew I needed it. And so we worked that out. Um, you know, we've bought um, a lot of hand sanitizer from local distilleries. Um, you know, they got into that boat and, and made that for a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, and then, right. Um, and then also just because we are, we have a full production kitchen here. So we are a restaurant in some respects. So we have a lot of those types of vendors. And because the restaurants were struggling, um, we had opportunity to get things that we don't normally get or get more of things um, because some of our vendors had excess surplus because they weren't sending it to restaurants. So that was another opportunity for us to pivot and bring in things that um, people really wanted that we may not have always had or not had enough of. Um, so we never ran out of toilet paper um, ever. Um, we ran out of yeast and flour on occasion for a day maybe. Um, but if you go to the competition, they were out for weeks at a time, if not longer than that. Um, so I think that's, you know, customers really appreciate that we did that. Sure. Um, talk about safety and cleanliness. That had to be something you were conscious of kind of amping up. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've always been, you know, we're in the natural food business. So we have always had an attention to detail around that and food safety, obviously, because we have a full production kitchen. So, um, you know, we have that level of, of food service knowledge um, that you may not have in a typical store that doesn't make food uh, in the store. So um, we took it very seriously. Um, we constantly communicated with our staff. Um, we put, you know, all the requirements in place that the county had established and CDC had established and beyond on that um, and just you know, constantly repeating and, and reinforcing and reminding people uh, about the importance of following the protocols that were established, um, you know, and, and our staff, you know, knock on wood was healthy through this whole process. And, um, and so, you know, that's something, and now most of us are vaccinated, myself, I am. Um, so we're getting towards the end of this, I think. That's great. Um, just two questions before we head to the fast five. Um, one is you are on the community, Montgomery County Community Food Council. Can you talk about what you do on that and the importance of its work? Sure. So, so I'm actually just coming off of it because it's a, four, it's a number of year term. Um, so I can go back, but I have to take a break. Um, so I'm off of it currently, but it's still heavily involved and I'm in the alumni group now. Um, so we um, do everything associated with food in the county. Um, there's different task force within the group. So some focus on food insecurity, um, focus, some focus on the food economy, which is what I was primarily focusing on. So the big thing that we did uh, while I was there was establish the local food guide. Um, so it was a printed and also electronic guide of all the local vendors within the community. 
Um, we did lots of things to support them here at Dawson's, um, but through the Food Council, we were able to help advertise, you know, these local businesses and, you know, to really kind of bring light to a lot of the really cool stuff that's being made in the county. Um, but the county, the other part of it is that food insecurity is a big, big piece of what the Food Council does. Um, and I've been involved in that, but not, you know, in a lead position or anything. And, um, but support them with that. There's also a food literacy part component to it um, about education on food. Um, and I'm forgetting the other, other one, which is bad at me, but um, it's a great organization um, and they always need volunteers, so. Super. The other question before we shift, uh, you have a really big and challenging job. What do you like best and what do you like least about it? Um, I mean, I like the, what I like most about it is just the constant changing it's a variety of you know either i'm in the store every day it's it's different every day so um i like the fact that there is you know always something happening and something new to try um i certainly enjoy the interaction with the customers you know i did a, a small stint um and as a desk job and i did not like that um you know so i definitely like to be on the sales floor as much as possible i wish i was on more i have to sit and do zoom calls like this but um i wish i was on the floor you know more but that's what i like the most um, what I like the least about it is, you know, I think probably just the, the stress of, you know, running your own business and being the person who has to make, not make all the decisions, but ultimately the person who makes all the decisions. Um, and so, you know, it's um, difficult sometimes with finding the right people. You know, if you lose a really good person, it's hard to find a replacement. Um, I think staffing is probably one of the challenges. That makes sense. Okay. Well, Bart Yablonski, I am delighted to have had this kibitz with you. And now as we shift to the fast five, okay. we'll get to know you a little bit better. Um, first, uh, what is your favorite cuisine? Favorite cuisine? Um, I really enjoy, I mean, Italian food. I love Italian food. Okay. What is one food you definitely will not eat? Eggs, like like eggs, like scrambled eggs, and eggs in something's fine, but eggs on their own, never. Not a thing. All right. Uh, what motivates you? Um, I think challenges, something where I can challenge a challenge where I can see the result and and accomplish something and and be successful at it. Love that. Uh, question four: When it is even safer to do so, where would you like to travel? I love St. Bart's, um, not because it's named after me, but it's a great place that I was fortunate enough to be able to go to. I um, would love to go back there. Nice. And the fifth question, the one that I ask every one of my guests is, Bart Yablonski, Dawson's Market, what is your secret hidden superpower? What is something you're really good at that most folks can't do? That's a hard one. Uh, what am I really good at that most people can't do? Um, I'm good with numbers, so I'm, I'm good at, at, at understanding and looking at numbers and being able to figure out pretty quickly where we need to be financially. Great. That's important. We got to keep you in business. So right. I Thanks. am very proud to be a supporter, a customer, an advocate, a buddy, you know, Dawson's Market uh, in the heart of downtown Rockville. If you've never been there, please consider stopping by uh, shop at Dawson's and you will be uh, so pleased by the service and by the variety of wonderful products. So, Bart, thank you so much for taking time to chat with me thank this you. afternoon. All the best to you. It was great. All right. Thank you so much. Of course. Stay safe. Bye-bye. <laughs>